Hi, everybody. This is Kent Verderico, professional recording and mixing engineer in Los Angeles. I am a studio owner of blueribbonstudios.com. I have over 14 years in the music industry. Today, we're going to talk about how to set up a basic Pro Tools template, one that'll work for you, uh, one you can recall every time you do a new session. It'll make life super easy. And uh, this is my first installment, Pro Tools Lessons by a Pro. So open your Pro Tools. You're going to see here your first thing is your sample rate. Your sample rates may vary depending on your interface. I'm using 88.2 on this particular session. Um, you can always change it every time you open your template, so I wouldn't stress it too, too much. I'm going to be using an I.O. that I have created, and I've called uh, Symphony System Labeled. You may want to just use the stereo I.O. It's up to you. Um, you're going to want to find a place to save it, name it, on a, hopefully on a separate, fast eSATA audio drive, internal or an external FireWire 800. So this is your basic Pro Tools layout. This is what you see when you open up a totally blank session. It's completely empty. So I'm going to show you how to make new tracks here, basically setting up. So Shift-Command-N will bring up this window, or you can do Pro Tools menu, track new. You'll see me, I'm selecting here, I'm making multiple tracks. I'm doing this pretty quickly here, so bear with me. Making a couple aux tracks, and I'll explain what I'm making here in a second. Then I'm gonna make a master fader so I know my final output, so I'm not clipping my, my final D to A converter of what I'm listening to. A little side note really quickly while I'm making these tracks, hitting command equals or Command Plus, located at the top of the keyboard near the eject button on a Mac keyboard, toggles between the edit window and the mix window in Pro Tools. You'll notice that I made three separate stereo auxes. Why did I do that? Force of habit. It was a big waste of time, actually. Sometimes I get caught in my old habits. I'll change that to three and hit go. Boom, a lot faster. So the audio track, as you'll see in a second, as we name it, is going to be our click track. By double clicking on the audio name, audio one, double clicking, it'll now become whatever I want to name it. So I'll double click that and I'm going to call that click. And we'll put a click track on there in a second. Now doing command arrows, we'll go to the next one automatically instead of having to reach with the mouse and hitting next or previous, you can use the arrows on your keyboard. So I'm going to call this effects one and effects two. Those are going to be my two kind of default reverb returns to my session. I've also made a band bus, which everything will be routed to. Double clicking at the bottom of the track will bring up the color wheel for you to color coordinate your tracks. So I'll, I'm just going to arbitrarily make some colors here. I'll make my effects returns pink. I'm going to make my band bus purple. I'm going to make my master fader here red. Made my click track blue. So it just kind of makes things easy to view quicker to find stuff, especially in the heat of the moment with client requests. Next thing I'm going to do here is uh, do all my busing and routing, and your I.O. is going to be completely different than mine because I have labeled mine. Yours won't say sum, yours won't say effects one, bus effects two. I have created those and renamed them for me, and you can do that yourself, and I will explain that in a future lesson. But for now, you can use bus one, bus two, you know, output one and two, whatever you have labeled in your default session. I'm going to pull up a couple altiverbs next. That's my uh, number one choice for reverbs. I'm going to pull up a smaller kind of room on the first uh, effects return, and I'll have a larger hall on the second return as kind of my default altiverb settings. I'm going to go ahead and option drag this plugin onto the adjacent track just for a real quick way of copying the plugin. Works for any plugin. So now I'm pretty much almost ready to save this except for adding a click track. So I'll go Digidesign Click. It's the default click that opens up with Pro Tools. I've created my own sound that I prefer in accents that I've just loaded in there. Hitting seven on the numeric keypad will toggle the click on and off in any session. This is extremely crucial for eliminating click bleed at the end of your recordings at the ring out of your songs. Extremely critical. So now I will save this as a template, as my working template. And I'll go File, Save as Template. I want to select location for my template, so I'm going to look through my drive. I'm just going to make a folder here. I'm going to put it in my session for ease on my main audio drive, and I'll save that as Mix Template. 
And there you have it, guys. That's how you do a template. Now you're probably wondering, well, what good does that do? Let me show you here. You go back to your audio drive. Every time you want to do a new session for anything, you find your mix template, which is right here highlighted, mix template.ptt instead of PTF, which is the normal Pro Tools icon tag. The PTT file here is a template file. So every time I click on this file now in the future, it'll automatically open up a new session with my sample rate. You can choose a different sample rate if you prefer, hit OK, find a location where to save it, hit OK, name it, and now you have your template already good to go for your next session. You won't have to make all these tracks every time again. And that's the tip of the iceberg, you guys. You don't have to, you can make as many tracks as you want. I just simply made two reverb returns, a band bus, a click. Obviously, if you were a composer, you could add, you know, 10 MIDI tracks, your instruments. You could also drag a bunch of plugins for pre-mixing on stuff or a mixing template. You name it. The sky's the limit. And there you have it, guys. Opening it up here just to show you again. I've saved it. I wanted to open my template to test it. I called it Test Template. And that concludes our first series. I hope you enjoyed it. I would appreciate any suggestions, comments, corrections, um, anything that could better uh, this educational video. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.